Hey, this is Manny with Not Waiting to Live. I'm a former Mercedes-Benz car salesman, and in this video, I'm going to explain what happens to unsold new cars after a model year changeover. So this video is gonna be helpful for people that wanna know how much money is at stake when model years change over from one year to the next, and those older new cars are left on the lot. So I'm gonna use real data, real examples to help you set expectations for how much money is at stake. And if you watch or listen to the advice of other auto experts on YouTube, what they're gonna give you is, in general, the shadow of a tree, to use an analogy. And I'm gonna show you the whole tree, the actual tree. And the reason this nuance is important is there are gonna be people if you wait out for the model years to change over, what you want is not gonna be available. But there are other people that if you wait for the model years to change over, you're gonna save thousands of dollars. And understanding what the actual fundamental difference is is gonna be important and I'm gonna show you in this video. And before I actually get into the explanations, I wanna just talk about an example real quick. And I'll show you in between 2019 and 2020, the Toyota Highlander changed the body type. And right now, if you were to go to a dealer, they might have an incentive from the manufacturer of about $750. And I'll explain what a dealer incentive really is in a moment. But for example's sake, when that Highlander changed, crossed over, the 2019 crossed over to the next model year, the dealer is going to get a $3,000 incentive, which is money that they're, they're going to be able to to use to decrease the sale price of the vehicle. Now that's a difference of $2,250, so just, on, just a little over $2,000. That's not always the same discount. So even within the same manufacturer, you can see a different example of comparing the 2020 RAV4 to the 2019. There's a thousand dollars difference in the incentive from what a dealer would get right now versus what happens to that car once it crosses the model year threshold. And what these dealer incentives are, it's a subsidy that the manufacturer gives a dealer based on a number of variables, including national demand, regional demand, and the local sales goals and uh, unit production of that specific dealership. So I talk about this uh, in some more detail in my video about myths at from buying a car at the car dealership. But Dealers do not sell a car based on a dealer invoice and a holdback number. That's a myth, which I go into more detail about. What they're really basing their decision on is how much incentive that they are going to receive from, from selling a vehicle. And that varies from month to month. And it unfolds in real time. And it's not just manufacturer specific, not just model specific, but trim specific one specific trim might have a significantly higher incentive than another. And, uh, you know, I, I see, get messages from people, work with people on their cars, particularly in the sports car market. You could see cars sit on a dealer lot for years, literally two years. I mean, I've got guys who look at a Dodge Charger or a loaded Mustang and they'll say, hey, it's brand new, but it's a couple years old. And the dealer doesn't even want to negotiate with me. You know, why is that? There are a ton of reasons behind the scenes. Um, th this dealer could be playing a cash flow game. Maybe it costs them $100 a month or $200 a month in interest to hang on to this car. So they're willing to wait it out. They're willing to see if they can hit their other sales goals for a specific quarter or a year that could make or break what incentives they get. Uh, dealers can get backdated incentives on cars that they sold if they hit certain milestones. That means they could make an extra 5% on every single car that they sold. There's a number of behind the scenes mechanics that make one dealer different from another. Now, right now, I, I do have videos on my channel where I talk about the most recent dealer incentives and the biggest dealer incentives for each brand. So you can check out those vehicles to get a sense of what is possible. But in general, these incentives are not gonna get much further beyond $3,000 in relative difference. So if the dealer is normally given $8,000 incentives, when the model year changes over, I don't expect to see much more than 11,000. If it's normally zero, I don't expect to see much more than 3,000. 
And I, I'm gonna explain why through an example here. We're gonna bring up a dealer or a manufacturer, Honda. Now, this example is relative to the coronavirus pandemic. Right now, there's a ton of uncertainty an extremely sharp decline in demand uh, for new cars. But let's see how Honda has, has handled this so far. We see as a brand, they're down 28% in sales. Civic is down 27.5%. Accord is down 33%. CRV down. Interesting. Ridgeline, not really down. Down negative 0.2%. So sales are roughly the same year over year over the same period of time through April. But at the same time, Honda has been able to respond to this uh, lack of demand or decreasing demand in real time. So their brand production is actually down even more than the sales is down. Brand production is down 39%. So they are, people are buying more new cars right now than they're actually making. And it's not affected evenly. So the Civic down 27 and a half. CRV down 39.9, Accord down 38, Ridgeline down 7.5%. And remember, their sales have been normal. So if you're somebody who's thinking about waiting out, there's a chance that there aren't going to be those Ridgelines for you. Um, there might be the chance. This is just an example I give for, for Honda. This is a similar story for all the other auto manufacturers. They have a good ability and actually got a gift, which... Yeah, I, I talk about this in one of my videos. Um, I give you five reasons why most people overestimate the effect on uh, car prices or the effect that coronavirus has on car prices because these dealers have proven the ability to react in real time to just reducing the supply, which ultimately means there isn't going to be this glut of extra cars that they need to massively discount from the manufacturer's end. They're going to give what they can to support the dealers who have already made a financial commitment to those those vehicles, but they're also going to do what they can on their end to prevent themselves from having to lose money on making cars. And so you'll see, I show you two graphs here of North America versus the world in terms of auto production. We've demonstrated ability not only in North America, so U.S., Canada, and Mexico. You see that between 2007 and 2009, production was cut by 60%, actually a little bit more than that. And globally as well, they were able to cut production in a rel relatively short order to reduce the impact to the bottom line of these manufacturers. Now, if you have something specific that you're looking for, you know, reach out in the comment section. I might be able to help you out and uh, give you my two cents on, on how your, the specific car you're looking for might be affected. I do cover all things vehicle negotiation on this channel. So if you're looking for a new car, used car, lease, I have a video to help you negotiate that on your own. I also offer help as well. So if you did like this video, please take the time to like the video, comment if you can. This is the way the YouTube algorithm picks up my content, gives my channel more exposure, and gives me incentive to keep making videos like this. So thanks again for your time.